accidents happen. And that's why we have insurance companies. For the most part, insurance companies can take care of the situation. But occasionally you have a situation with extensive damage, possibly loss of life, that a lawsuit needs to be filed. Unfortunately, lawsuits can be abused. In Texas and in different parts of the country, we have a situation where commercial vehicles are being targeted for these lawsuits. If you have a logo on the side, you're a target. In this podcast, we're going to be talking to some folks from the Keep Texas Trucking Coalition to talk about this abuse and to talk about some House and Senate bills pending in this Texas legislature that will hopefully put a cap on some of this abuse and get it under control. Welcome to the Latino Business Report. This podcast covers business, people, and issues of the day from a Latino perspective. The Latino Business Report is brought to you by TAMAC, the Texas Association of Mexican-American Chambers of Commerce. TAMAC is the leading Hispanic business organization in Texas since 1975. Now for your host, J.R. Gonzalez. And once again, thank you for joining us. Today on Latino Business Report, we're going to be talking about lawsuit abuse right here in the state of Texas. And today with us, we have some representatives from the Keep Texas Trucking Coalition. We have Mary Tips and Lee Parsley. Mary, how are you today? And can you tell us a little bit about your coalition and what it does? I'd be happy to, JR. Thank you. The Keep Texas Trucking Coalition was formed um, as a result of us looking at the litigation affecting commercial vehicles on the road. Any vehicle on the road today that has a logo on the side of it is a target for a lawsuit and it's become a crisis. If you watch TV at all, you see the advertising that goes on. Attorneys, you know, have a wreck, get a check. So we've created the coalition. It's got over 360 members. It has 58 associations and 200 plus small business owners to demonstrate the breadth of the problem. In our membership, we have ABC Pest and Lawn, we have landscaping companies, we have trucking companies, anybody that's in the distribution is affected by this litigation. We will work this legislative session to correct the problem and it's a group effort because it is just getting worse every day. When you say it's getting worse, what type of abuse are we talking about here? You're talking about lawyers just really taking advantage or a certain set of lawyers taking advantage of the system to inflate the prices or or to inflate the settlements? I will defer to Lee on that, but yes, one out of every 10 car crashes today results in a lawsuit, and that's a crisis, and it doesn't matter who's at fault. Lee will give you an example of a lawsuit out of the, believe, the Houston area that demonstrates beautifully what we're discussing. JR, one example of the problem in the litigation is a instance where a truck was carrying a load from Texas to California. And on Interstate 20, which is, of course, is a major road between Texas and California, and south of Odessa, the truck driver was traveling west and a pickup traveling east uh, hit a patch of ice and lost control, went across a grassy median into the lane of the 18-wheeler. The 18-wheeler's driver hit the brakes within a half second and slowed the truck to about 40 miles an hour but could not avoid the collision. And so there was a collision head-on with the pickup, and it was terrible. Uh, uh, Children were killed in the collision and others were injured, but it wasn't the truck driver's fault. But the plaintiff attorney alleged that the trucking company should have instructed their driver to be going at 15 miles an hour or should have just taken a different path to California altogether rather than the interstate that runs from Texas to California. So that's what the trucking industry is faced with is sometimes uh, they just don't seem to be at fault and yet they are hit with these enormous judgments. And I'm sure those lawsuits are costing that industry a lot of money. They are indeed. At the very start, you know, the, the industry has just to pay the lawyers, but in the big picture, their insurance premiums go way, way up for them for the company that's involved in the lawsuit, and frankly, insurance company spreads the risk across all 
companies. And so everybody's insurance premiums go up. And those insurance premiums are then passed down by the companies to the people who are paying for goods and services. JR, there was a, t a company in Dyball, Texas, in East Texas. It's a small town. And at December, they closed down. It was 287 jobs in a small East Texas town that they don't have anymore. And they went out of business because of this litigation. Because, okay, wow. The cost of insurance. The cost of yeah. insurance. Uh, there are instances, there's one in, in Houston where a fellow was out for a ride on his bicycle. Uh, he was a Houston firefighter and a triathlete, so it wasn't the first time he ever rode a bicycle. And he had his head down and he crashed into the back of a parked truck that was delivering supplies to a job site. So in that instance, it doesn't seem like the truck had any fault at all. But there, a jury awarded the bicyclist almost $40 million against the trucking company for alleged trucking company negligence. Uh, the truck was legally parked on the side of the road delivering landscape supplies. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The truck was parked. Yes, sir. A bicyclist hit the parked truck and then was and received a settlement. That's right. It's, the verdict from the jury was $40 million, just under $40 million. The insurance companies paid the family $9.75 million in settlement. And it's a bicyclist hit the back of a parked truck. Okay, Lee, now, Lee, you're an attorney, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, could you please explain to me how in the world a jury can, can do a settlement like that? I mean, if the truck was parked and it wasn't moving and the bicyclist hit it, why should the bicyclist? I mean... I'm going to go out and buy a bicycle and start crashing into vehicles. Well, I wouldn't advise that, but uh, it's the environment we live in today. In that particular case, the trial judge in Houston, Texas, refused to allow the trucking company to tell the jury that its truck was legally parked. So the jury was led to believe that the truck was illegally parked, and that resulted in the big number. Uh, in the, as I said, in the one in, on, out on out near Odessa, the, the plaintiff attorney went 10 years back into the trucking company's records to try to indicate that the trucking company was a bad actor on the highway, had a bad safety practices. 10 years back in time is what the judge allowed the, trucking, the, the plaintiff lawyer to do. And the jury obviously ultimately believed that this was a bad trucking company, even though their driver could not avoid the accident. So it's an environment that these trucking companies just cannot survive. Uh, you probably know, JR, that Laredo, Texas is the largest land port in the United States. More dollars worth of goods and service goods come across that point in Laredo uh, than any other spot in the United States. And it comes across on trucks and it goes all the way across the country. Trucking is integral to the Texas economy, absolutely invaluable to us. We all have to have them. Um, you've probably been watching what I've been watching when we had the snowpocalypse not long ago in Texas. The grocery store shelves were empty because the trucks couldn't run. We must have trucking companies on our road, but we also need the mom and pop flower delivery services and the pest control services and the other it, people who just make our lives easier and are absolutely necessary to our economy. And they're all under fire, as Mary was describing. Well, one of the things I saw Lee and doing the research, and correct me if I'm wrong, is like one out of 15 people in the state of Texas are employed by some sort of industry or trucking industry. I mean, trucking industry is huge, and that is the backbone not only of our economy, but after this uh, freeze and everything else that we here, had here not too long ago, that's why the grocery store shelves were empty. That's why you couldn't why you couldn't get bottled water because that's being affected. So it, it just and that's why you guys are are introducing this uh, this bill or these bills in the Senate. Tell us a little bit about those. Well, we're, we're trying to do two things through the, through the legislative process. First is that um, I'll tell you that there, it, it's not all lawyers. There are tons of good lawyers, but there are a few that are, that are driving this problem. And the same thing for the medical world. Most doctors are fabulous people and we would all like to go see them, but there are a few doctors who participate with a few lawyers to try to run up the medical bills in these cases. So, the cases we're worried about are, are the ones where it just doesn't look like anybody was injured or the trucking company just isn't at fault. So let's take one of those cases where the, where the plaintiff just didn't seem to have any injury. They told the police at the time. It happens all the time, literally, JR, all the time. 
that a person gets out of their car, it's a fender bender, they say to the police, I don't feel any pain, I'm good, I don't need to go to the hospital, Let, you know, they exchange insurance information and then they go. And then a year later, they file a lawsuit claiming they've got a massive back injury. Well, it takes some doctor to prescribe, to diagnose that back injury. And then that doctor treats and treats and treats and the medical bills are outrageous. So one bill in the legislature is to try to let juries know better information about medical billing. They need to know that a doctor who's billed $150,000, no person on the planet would actually pay that amount of money. Insurance company might pay $15,000. Medicare might pay $12,000, right? I mean, those bills are wildly inflated, but juries don't hear about it. So juries need to know that. And then juries need to deal with what I've explained to you, you know, 10 years worth of digging into a trucking company's records to try to prove their, their threat to humanity is not fair. And so the legislature needs to draw some lines. It needs to say there's only so far back you can go and the jury needs to hear evidence that's relevant to this case and not just purely prejudicial against the trucking company. So that's what we're asking the legislature to look at uh, this upcoming session. Well, Lee, let me, let me ask you this question. I know back, um, oh, quite almost 20 years ago, I think it's 2003, there was this whole big dust up in the legislature about tort reform. And there was, everybody was talking tort reform and there was a big battle about that. How does that differ than what we're talking about today, or does it? Oh, it doesn't. It, fundamentally, it's the same issue. Back in 2003, the litigation environment was terrible for Texas's doctors and hospitals. They were just being sued all the time for cases that looked like they just didn't have much merit, but it didn't stop the lawyers from pursuing the cases. And so in 2003, what the legislature did was go into the Texas laws and rebalance the playing field for doctors and hospitals. The result of that has been unquestionably, the statistics prove it out. There are more doctors in Texas, they are coming to Texas to practice medicine rather than leaving Texas to practice other places. And therefore we have better health care in Texas because of it. This is just the same thing, it's just a different industry under fire. It's no longer the doctors and hospitals, it's now the commercial vehicle business. So it's the same problem, uh, it just taking a different form in 2021 than it did in 2003. But the legislature, the happy thing is, the legislature can do things to make it better. It did for doctors in 2003 and it can for truckers in 2021. Well, let's hope so. Mary, so there's, uh, Lee was talking about some bills and, and House bills, Senate and House bills that are in the legislature right now. Can you kind of uh, go over that or just what is your coalition doing to help fight, you know, this type of abuse? Well, JR, thank you. If you go to www.keeptexastrucking.com, that's our coalition webpage. It has videos, a description of the problem and the solution that we propose. We have the two bills, as you mentioned, uh, House Bill 19, Senate Bill 17, and then House Bill 1617, and Senate Bill 207. We are trying to get both of those bills passed and we're asking business owners to come to, or to go to the webpage, sign up to be a coalition member and to submit to us their logo so that we can include them in all the collaterals that go to the Capitol promoting the passing of these two bills. So how far into it are you right now? I know the session is still relatively, well, it's the session. And with COVID and everything going on, are these are these scheduled for committee? Are they got to that point yet? Where is it at? Yes. Uh, House Bill 19 will be heard next Wednesday, the 10th of March, in the Civil Jurisprudence Committee at 8 a.m. If you'll see, Jr. both those bills, House Bill 19 and Senate Bill 17, those are low bill numbers, and those illustrate the necessity to get them passed and get them heard quickly. What type of pushback are you getting on this? I would assume there's pushback. There is pushback. Uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, this is a very lucrative type of litigation, and obviously people don't want it to go away. And so we will be up against some high dollar opposition, but we feel prepared for it. Um, you know, 88% of the tr distribution in Texas is a company with one to 10 trucks. 
and those are the main stable that's who provides our deliveries our services and people get that and they want to join the coalition and have their voices heard through it to make sure they stay in business this is an industry within itself isn't it i mean you have the person who's injured or allegedly injured you have an attorney the attorney has its own doctors that he refers people to his own body shop to fix the other vehicles I mean, it, it's, it's, it's like a cycle. And they do refer to it as the lawsuit industry. It's driven by, largely by the lawyers who, of course, are working on a contingent fee. So they're getting a third to 40% of whatever the plaintiff recovers. So they're incentivized to get the price as high as possible. Absolutely. And that's why the advertisements on television are constant advertisements on television, at least where I live, uh, and probably all over the state, because... There is so much money in this when you're making a third to 40% of a, as I described earlier, a nine and a half million dollar settlement. Uh, you know, that's real money for most people. And it drives the litigation. Now, Lee, if, if these laws were to pass, when would they probably take effect? Probably September the 1st of 2021. We could get there a little sooner. I'll tell you just a little bit of legislative practice. If we could get to two thirds of the members of the House and two thirds of the members of the Senate to vote for the bills, they would become immediately effective, which could be May or June of this year. So that's one of the reasons we're with you today is because we, we want our members of the legislature to appreciate the seriousness of this problem and to vote for the bills so that we can become effective even sooner. Well, it seems to me that if the lawyers know that these, these bills are pending and this could happen, they're probably putting every dollar they have into advertising to try to <laughs> to try to reap the benefits while they're lasting. You know, before that 2003 legislation took effect, we were talking about with doctors and hospitals. It also became effective September 1st of that year. And in the second half of August of 2003, it was just a mountain of lawsuits filed in the court system as the plaintiff lawyers just dumped everything they had into the system before the, the law became effective. So we'll see that. We'll see the same thing in in with regard to commercial litigation, probably commercial vehicle litigation, probably in September of this year, there'll be a, a dump into the legal system in August and then things will smooth out. We're, we're hopeful if we get the bills passed and if they have the effect, we hope they will. We hope by a year from now, things will be better for commercial vehicle owners. Well, as we're talking about commercial vehicle owners and the uh, lawsuit abuse, Mary, let me ask you this question. This is not only affecting the owners of these industries. I mean, it's affecting a lot of people. Sure, it absolutely, JR. If you, if you can't get your prescriptions delivered, you can't have your groceries delivered, it affects it, everything. Let's face it, if you're holding it, potentially it, began, it came on a truck, and then that truck delivered the product, and then another distribution is getting it. So it's across all industries. What's it doing to people's insurance rates? They're going off the roof. We're hearing from people that, I, in fact, I spoke to a cousin of mine last week that has trucks in East Texas, and his tr insurance has gone from 600 a truck to 2,400 a truck. You know, for a small business owner, that is not a sustainable situation. That's a business killer right there. Yeah, it'll put you right out of business. So the big guys can absorb those costs in their processes, but the small business owner cannot. It definitely affects those small to medium-sized businesses that are young entrepreneurs, people that are growing something. Uh, th this, is, this is bad. All right, what can people do? Go to keeptexastrucking.com, sign up, send us your company logo, we will be doing outreach to the coalition members, asking them to write letters. Tell us what your story is, um, because you probably have one. Nine out of 10 company owners do. Is it your insurance? Is it the fear of your lawsuits? Um, tell us your story, and then we will get that message to the members of the legislature. JR, I'll be a I'll be a cheerleader for representative democracy today. Okay. Texas legislature, House and Senate uh, serve their citizens and they like to hear from their citizens. And people can make a difference in this world. I know 
there's such cynicism out there. People think, oh, I don't, it doesn't matter what I do or what I say. That is just incorrect. If you'll get on the phone and call your member of the House or the Senate, the Texas House or Senate, the, the people in Austin, not the people in Washington, and tell them your story and help us tell your story to them, it will make a difference. They do listen and they are, they are responsive to small business owners in Texas who call them on the telephone and say, I've got a problem and you need to fix it. I'll tell you, people can make a difference. And even for the small business owner, even if they're not even remotely associated with the trucking industry, they still got to get their products and supplies. Exactly. And so that's that's kind of delaying their deliveries or it's costing their cost of business to go up. Right. And, and, it, and it affects their hiring practices, I'll tell you, because in these lawsuits, the plaintiff lawyer always wants to say, that the defendant's hiring practices were bad. So you put bad people in the cabs of your trucks or bad people in the cabs of your little pickup going to do pool servicing. So they indict the employees lots of times and, and paint them to be bad people. And that means that employers are so very cautious about their employment practices that it makes it difficult for people to find jobs, it, good paying jobs, being truck drivers and being pool service technicians and that kind of thing. So the lawsuit environment is not just small businesses. It works its way all the way down to individuals who are making applications to go to work for a company and they can't get in the door because they've got some little problem in their background. Well, wouldn't it also go all the way down to the consumer? Absolutely. I mean, if insurance prices are going up, if the company is having to pay more for its insurance and it's going to have to do that cost more for delivery, I mean, ultimately it seems like the consumer, whether you in the, own a business or not, is, is actually being affected as well. And Mary's in my world, we call that a tort tax. The tort being a, a, you know, the litigation you pursue for a personal injury is called a tort in the legal practice. And the people pay for the lawyers going to the courthouse and getting these big numbers because it costs, ins it raises the cost of insurance. The insurance companies pass that through to the people they insure. The people they insure pass that through to all of us in the price of goods and services. It's a hidden tax on everyone. Mary. Can individuals also make phone calls and get involved in this? If, if you have somebody out there that is just an individual and sees that this abuse being done, would it be effective for them to pick up the phone Absolutely. or write a letter to their lawmakers? Absolutely. As Lee said, the members of the legislature want to hear from their constituents. They don't want to hear from us. They want to hear from them. And anyone who wants to make a call and encourage them is welcomed. We just... We want to have a call from a member's office and say, hey, we got the message. Don't have anybody else call us. We got it. Those are wonderful things to hear. So, yes, absolutely. An individual, a business owner, anyone can make those calls. On your website, can an individual go to that website and find out who their lawmaker is or who their state senator representative is? so they can make those calls? Yes, you can. And you can also go to www.whorepresentsme.com. That's another little nifty webpage that'll tell you who your senators and your representatives are. On the Keep Texas Trucking website, you can, it will tell you who your senator or representative is and you just click a button and it will send a letter on your behalf or an email on your behalf to your senator or representative. And you have the opportunity to add your own flavor to that message if you'd like to. So it's a very simple process that we, that Mary's and others have set up through the coalition website. But we prefer that you limit the profanities when you're writing those letters or giving it the flavor? We Do would prefer include. that. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lee told me to, Lee told me to say this. That's a pro tip, JR. Okay. Well, guys, I want to, want to thank you for, for being here with us today and kind of explaining this thing. Um, Mary, do you have any closing comments, or, or, or Lee, especially from you, anything that um, business owners need to do or can be aware of? And I know there's going to be pushback. But this is going to be an interesting piece. Well, both of these are going to be interesting pieces of legislation to watch. Well, Jr., we are just so thankful to have the relationship with the Texas Association of Mexican American Chamber of Commerce. Your involvement is just huge. Um, the members are really taking notice, and we thank you for that. Stay in touch and um, check out our webpage and do whatever it is you know you feel comfortable. Absolutely, and who knows, we may do an, another podcast with kind of an update of where things are going if it gets a little bit sticky. 
And, uh, and I thank you for that. Um, the TAMAC, the Texas Association of Mexican American Chambers of Commerce, is definitely um, an organization behind this effort. And we want to see this happen because we need to keep trucks moving and we need to make sure the consumer has a fair price for what they're paying for. Absolutely. Counselor, any closing thoughts or do's or don'ts? Well, my only closing thought would be everyone be safe out there. Uh, the best thing for all of us is to avoid accidents, uh, avoid collisions, and we're all better off that way. So everyone to be safe out there and uh, don't be afraid to call your legislator and express your opinion about this topic or anything else. Thank you very much, JR. We've truly appreciated the time with you today. And if you're a truck driver and it's actually snowing or a little bit of ice, you need to go down to 15 miles an hour, stay off the highway, take all the back roads, and anticipate that accident you haven't had yet or else you're going to be sued. Or, or maybe just correct? pull your truck over and stop. <laughs> <laughs> yet they get paid on how quickly they get the load there. Okay. All right, folks. Well, thank you. You've been listening to the Latino Business Report. My name is J.R. Gonzalez. If you like what you hear, hit like, follow us, and we'll see you next time.